Um, so if I could ask uh, everyone to join me with your, uh, ideally with your videos on, certainly at least your microphones on. So uh, welcoming back uh, Andrew Josie, um, welcoming live uh, Chris Ford, uh, welcoming back Sonia, um, Vishal, Chris Frost, um, welcoming live Jean-Baptiste, I hope. Uh, and uh, Mark, you're already there. So uh, this is uh, the Ask the Experts panel. Um, this has always been a, a popular session when we've done face-to-face uh, -face events, uh, live events. It really does give uh, people an opportunity to uh, share their uh, questions um, or experiences with people who are um, very familiar with the standards and instrumental in creating them in some cases and evolving them in, in others. So uh, that's quite a gallery I can see across my screen. Um, thank you all for joining. And, um, and we'll, we'll kick off to, to keep, um, keep a bit of flow going. Um, Mark, I'm going to come to you first. Um, uh, a question came in. Mark, you talk about architectural debt. Can you explain that a bit more, please? Yeah, it's, it's derived from the notion of technical debt. Actually, um, the idea is that uh, often if, you, if you're uh, pressured as a, as a developer or as an architect, uh, because something needs to go live in the short term because there's an immediate business need, then it could be that you, say, cut some corners. You, you take a shortcut knowing that you, you don't have the ideal solution, um, but you know that you need you need to fix that later, and that's basically a debt you have to um, uh, basically to to account for. And later on, you have to repay that debt. That's the idea, and that could be in the in the technical solution, a technical debt. That's mainly for, for software developers with architectural debt. It's the same idea. And you made a choice that doesn't really fit your architecture, uh, knowing that you're going to repay that debt later on. Uh, but if you don't record that debt, and that was what, what I, I mentioned, that you can use your models for that, if you don't record it, it might stay in your architecture. And if you don't uh, fix these issues later on, basically you will end up with an architecture that is a kind of patchwork of all kinds of short-term solutions. Um, well, hardly an architecture anymore, I would say. So right. that's the idea. All right, thank you. I think that's, uh, that, that's, that's clear. Uh, Jean-Baptiste, welcome. Um, uh, exciting day with the launch of the uh, community. So uh, thank you for your help with that. Um, question came in. Um, are there, there's some questions saying, great, I have a place, well, comments, I have a place to ask my dumb questions now, which is, uh, which is good. And, um, and a few others, uh, uh, people welcoming the, uh, the initiative. Um, the question came in, are there actually already some models that are in the uh, repository on, on the community site yet, or will they be coming soon? Uh, they will mostly come soon. Um, I've already shared one of my models, and uh, and uh, some people from the already existing community, like uh, Nicolas Figue, already shared also uh, some things. And uh, we are in the process of uh, uh, moving moving things around and uh, and populating this, and uh, and uh, we try to have uh, more more foods for. For, for people uh, for the end of the year. Right, okay, thank you. Um, this question I think is probably, I'm gonna to come to you, Chris, and maybe uh, Sonia between you. Um, it's, a, it's a question that came in uh, earlier today around, uh, well, it was, it was a statement, my, my organization is not a member of the open group. Is there a way of getting involved in open group activities or or community activities in some way other than being a member obviously one answer is become a member for your organization but that may uh, that may take a while and be difficult in some cases but uh, any suggestions there i'm looking so at you I, there you go you're on mute no, no you're not there you go okay so um yeah, clearly the, the, the typical path is by, uh, you know, membership, but we do have uh, opportunities for folks to contribute ideas via the white paper path. That is, if you have a topic that you believe is of uh, kind of industry significance, then you can submit a proposal to us to uh, put in place a white paper around that, uh, that context. 
you know, generally the open group treats uh, white papers as opinion pieces rather than components of the standards necessarily. That is one way to contribute. Also, if we're engaging in an area um, where uh, we need a, a, a kind of a broader engagement, we will also uh, offer an invited expert status to some individuals uh, for a particular set of expertise that we need to pull in. Um, those are the typical paths these uh, we have for non-members. Right, and there, there was a, a part of that same question which I didn't I didn't ask you, but uh, was uh, you know is there a way of um, uh, of getting uh, a discounted rate for attendance at uh, events and things like that? And uh, uh, one I'm aware of. Well, I'll let I'll let you answer the question. Yes, I'm chomping at the bit to answer that question. The uh, the, the typical discount. Uh, you can get is uh, through your membership with the Association of Enterprise Architects. Um, uh, membership in that organization uh, for individuals runs from $75 for a year to uh, three years for 145, not to be too mercenary about it. But that also gets you access to the journal uh, and discounts to not only open group events, but other events too around the enterprise architecture community. So that's, uh, that's another path. Okay, thank you. Um, Sonia, I think I'll come to you on this one. Um, we are uh, users of the TOGA framework in my organization, but we are increasingly adopting agile methods. Does the open group have any advice on how these two can be combined? Okay, excellent question. And actually, the response is yes. There's work in progress into the Architect 2 Forum that we expect to release soon. A couple of guides about how the TOGA standard can be used along with Agile and supporting enterprise agility. And besides that, the main presentation, we have several resources in the TOGA library about Agile, white papers. We have a very good white paper about agility and webinars, blogs, and also other publications about Agile. So you can go into the library and make a search using Agile as a keyword and you will find resources in there. And these two guys are already almost finished. They are still into the project, into the architect forum. And, and by the way, Chris Frost is leading one of those teams. And uh, I think that content is going to provide more specific guidance on the topic. Thank you. Can I make a follow-up comment, Steve? Mm -hmm. um, of course. During the, during the event this, this week, uh, you've seen several presentations. In fact, uh, Chris also covered it here today, Chris Frost. Uh, if you're wondering how to use TOGAF in an agile context, uh, please do this. Set down the myths that the thing is a waterfall construct. Take a step back. Uh, look at how many of the artifacts in it are related to setting a business context and guidance for scaled teams of various scales and assess its applicability to the problem set you have. Uh, there's nothing in the TOGA framework that declares it as a waterfall construct. And there are many instances over the past decade and a half that I've been involved with this uh, organization, both as a user of the TOGA framework and as a developer of it, that um, make me shake my head when I hear this context for uh, for pure waterfall environment. It just, uh, honestly, I, have, I struggle a lot with this idea. I know you do. <laughs> We've had many conversations on that. Um, so sticking with Agile, um, Vishal, I think I'll come to you uh, on this one. Uh, you obviously, uh, for the debate purposes, um, took, the, uh, took the argument that that uh, uh, Agile teams maybe don't need EA so much. Um, now that you're unconstrained by arguing that position, what's uh, what's your real view? Yeah, it, it's, it's imperative, you know, that these two can obviously coexist and, and the real power comes when, when these two frameworks complement each other. So, uh, you know, as, as enterprise architect, that's the true value. Uh, and that's where the value will be maximized and uh, maximum realization can happen. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, switching to Archimate. Um, so uh, either either Jean-Baptiste or Mark maybe uh, jump on this one. Um, 
Uh, let's see. Um, the big challenge with manual modeling is that most systems never budget in story points for creating and maintaining the models. Definitely not the latter. Direc the direction should be using automated tools to maintain, uh, to create and maintain the models. Um, so obviously there are there are tools out there. Um, it, 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 can you comment on the comment? <laughs> You're both familiar you, with the use of tools. I think, I think you should. I think you should distinguish models of the uh, existing landscape, and you can also make that quite quite well. Um, and and we, well, we, we 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 do that as well. Uh, you can you can get data from all kinds of sources, CMDBs, other sources, and automate that. But the design of the future, you can't automate. You, you have to design it. So that's something you need to do. And of course, tool support will help you do that. Uh, but there's no way that, that that the design of the future will will automate itself. That's that's why you need to put in the effort. Uh, and of course, if you then use that again once you're going live with your system uh, as the baseline for further evolving the model partially automated, I think that's the way to go. Um, but it's it's not just models; it's documentation in general, of course. Um, if you have a, a let's say a sound definition of done in an agile world, uh, the documentation of what you build is part of that definition of done. It's not; it uh, it compiles on my machine. That's not the definition of done. <laughs> right. So it's it's just part of the work. So, but so I agree we should automate more and more what uh, the, the creation of these models, and we do so. Um, especially of the current state, you don't want to do that manually. Uh, keeping track of that is just too much work. And you, you, architects are not the bookkeepers of the present. Right. That's a good soundbite. Um, Jean Baptiste, I'll come to you for, for this one. It's a related question, I guess, that the learning curve of modeling standards like Archimate remains a challenge. Organizations find it easy to pick flowcharts versus modern modeling frameworks. What's your advice on this context in terms of um, getting the getting modeling standards like Archimate adopted inside an organization? Uh, that, that, that's a very good question. In fact, I guess that uh, what is hard with Archimate is uh, starting from scratch uh, with uh, uh, nobody to help you. Um, because uh, you'll end up trying to use um, most of the concept that you have in Archimate and uh, at the end you will not be able to really uh, create something and the learning curve will, will be bad. Um, my main advice would be to, uh, to, to be uh, uh, helped by some people and this could be the community and that's uh, one of the reasons what we decided to create this community. Um, it's to uh, maybe see that there are some um, usual questions that people have uh, for example, if you work in the field of, I would say, uh, applications, having a, a map of your application in your landscape uh, together with flows uh, between those applications can be one simple viewpoint uh, which rely on many two concepts in Archimate and, uh, and which is useful. So I would say that the, the, what people should uh, try to do is to, uh, uh, to, to, to be helped by some uh, people. And again, this could be the community that's the goal. And, uh, and try to, sm to start small with uh, uh, only key viewpoints uh, which are needed in their field. And uh, uh, I would say that there's no reason that something which is already produced using uh, other things like uh, PowerPoint, Visio, or such tools uh, can't be the document. Okay, thank you. Um, Andrew, this one's perfect for you. Um, the, the, the TOGAF library can be difficult to navigate if you're not sure what the publication name is. It may be that the topic can be covered in several publications, um, but how do I find out? Will there be an intelligent front end for information searches? Well, some good, some good news there is we will be replacing, uh, uh, updating um, the whole of the publications library in probably next next month and we will have elastic search on the front so that's going to improve things a lot at the moment um, the technology it's built with is actually well known for its poor search capabilities and uh, we will be replacing that so you you know elastic search i think most people are aware of is much better at contextually finding things so we'll be able to search through all the all the descriptions obviously we still as editors and we still got to put together good descriptions that mean you know meaningful descriptions to right Right. To help the search, but yes. 
Okay, we're getting uh, a, a new flood of questions coming in, uh, mostly on Archimate uh, at the moment. Um, let's see where to where to place the ah. Here's a, here's a good one. Um, it relates to an earlier. There was a, an earlier question that came in about uh, for the new uh, community um, activity. Does it does it matter what tool I created my models in? Um, so hold that. Uh, Hold that thought and then come to uh, is Archimate leaving the Archimate file format to the exchange format? Um, to me, the Archimate format works better for reading and would be much preferred. So, okay, two, okay. two parts to a question, I guess, there. Um, uh, I guess the easiest answer is that um, the, the goal of the community is to, is to share things and uh, for people to, to be able to access uh, this content. So obviously we decided to, uh, to emphasize the use of uh, the Archimed model exchange file format, uh, meaning that um, people can use it using any tool. Uh, which uh, supports its format, um, and uh, of course we uh, we don't block people uh, attaching other formats. So if if you decided to create your model using I don't know a Biz Design tool or Archie tool, uh, just upload the model in the exchange file format, and in addition uh, maybe share the native format. And uh, what we would also like people to do is to to share things. Uh, in an uh, easily readable format like PDF or HTML so that people don't have to download the file, open it in a tool. Uh, so exporting the model uh, pre-publishing it in, uh, in PDF could be a good solution also. Okay, thank you. Can I just follow up? I, it, what, what we need folks to understand about the uh, Archimate user community is that actually it's just launched and is a work in progress. And we expect, as as, and I need to thank JB and Kelly Gerben, Dr. Figue, everybody who's been involved in in trying to jumpstart this thing, recognize that it's a work in progress. And actually, we're expecting these kinds of questions to shape how the community develops over time. It genuinely is something we expect the folks asking the questions here to jump into in the community and help shape. There is no single answer to the questions. We're just trying to put a framework in place to get us going. OK. Thank you for that uh, clarification, Chris. Um, let's see. Um, there is uh, let's see, a suggestion for the community. Let's together build a collaborative model in, a new, in the new opened workspace. So is there any thought of, uh, of of building things collaboratively there. See a thumbs up from Chris. Yes, uh, that, that's uh, in fact the funny thing is that uh, when we first decided to to create this community, we uh, we had a kind of brainstorming session about what we we could do with it, and um, we we thought that uh, maybe um, at, at some point in time people uh, would want to go, to collaborate and create contents, and uh, but. Our, our first idea, first idea was that it was um, too early for that, and uh, and then we bootstrapped the community with people that uh, that we know, so Gerben, Nicola Figue, and uh, and lots of, of other people that are uh, known in the Archimate field. And uh, one of the first questions we had is, is it possible to collaborate? So we decided to um, to make it possible for for people to create kind of work groups so that they can uh, have their own space on the on the platform and uh, and uh, and so they they, they can work uh, as they want. Of course, it's not a, a real collaboration platform. They can share content, they can uh, co-create wiki pages, uh, but there's no tool behind. So people will still have to uh, to rely on their own tooling to be able to to model things on on their own and and share it. Uh, but th that's something that uh, that is supported by uh, by the platform. Okay, thank you. Great, great to see. Um, uh, question here on Togaf. Well, sorts of Togaf and a. Uh, uh, ODEF and TOGEF. Um, how does an existing open group standard relevant to data architecture get visibility within TOGEF? Um, maybe that's one for you, Sonia. Yeah, yes, of course, Steve. That's a very good question. Actually, we also have 
a couple of guys that are working progress to deliver more guidance and data management. There's one guy that has already been published, which is an information references model for business analytics that's already available in our library. And by the way, it has very nice Archimate models. Actually, Jim Baptiste work engaged on that work along with one of our members. So that guide is already published and it's going deeper into the subject. Uh, we also have another guide that it's coming soon about uh, data management. And we have another uh, working group into the architecture forum, which is data integration that are working in a white paper uh, to cover the subject. So that's uh, what we have already published and the work in progress in relation to data. Okay, thank you. Related question, um, but uh, this is on Archimate. Will Archimate be addressing the data architecture in the future? <laughs> well, it, it does already address data architecture at a certain level. Uh, and it is, it, it, you have to question where to, to uh, let's say, stop modeling in Archimate and start modeling in a more detailed language like, say, UML, which is more targeted towards that level of, say, data with attributes, etc. Uh, Archimate doesn't intend to be the, the one and only language that covers everything in, in all levels of detail. It's also not going to replace, let's say, BPMN for process modeling. Uh, so there is a certain level of data modeling possible in Archimate, and at a certain point, when you need to add more detail, you want to switch to, say, UML or other data modeling uh, approaches. Now, of course, you can discuss how much detail you want to have within Archimate and where that boundary should be. That's then a matter for, for the people in the Archimate forum to discuss and what, yeah, what, what comes out of that. One risk might be if you want to add details on data modeling or details on process modeling, that the language will grow and grow and the problem becomes larger and larger to learn the language. Like John Martin was saying, you have to, to very precisely select what you need and the bigger the language becomes, the more difficult that becomes. So. And that, that will remain uh, uh, something, yeah, we need to strike a balance there and, and not grow and grow the standard uh, to cover everything. Um, so, yeah, that will be an ongoing discussion, probably. Right, thank you. Uh, Chris, if I can come to you on, on this one. Um, uh, Chris Frost, sorry. Uh, if I can come to you on this one. Um, uh, ag agile, agile approaches uh, appear to be uh, I'm trying to summarize this. Agile approaches ap appear to be uh, more relevant in some environments than in others. Um, do you see any, any? and I ask this because um, you have some experience of government con government related contracts and, and commercial contracts. Do you see any particular um, environments where Agile uh, is, is not uh, being embraced as much as, as in others? Or I guess another way of putting it, what kind of environments have you seen where uh, agile, an agile approach is, uh, is taking off and, and which ones where a more perhaps a more traditional architecture approach is taking off? And the question, just to be clear, is about agile architecture, so it's not uh, throwing architecture mm -hmm. away as such. Yeah, interesting question. Um, and, and as a simple answer, I haven't seen any particular sort of business sector um, that's more or less um, uh, following agile architecture techniques. Um, and certainly between public and private sector, um, yeah, not really not a lot of difference I, c I could see. Um, I've had experience of some large public sector and large private sector organizations that are uh, you know, quite aggressively adopting agile delivery techniques and agile architecture with that. Um, there are some geographic distant, uh, differences. Different parts of the world are adopting these things at different paces, but that's not really specific to um, agile delivery techniques that's just uh, that's just following the general trends you see uh, across the globe um, in the rate at which different countries and different regions ad adopt new technologies and so you, you do see some differences um, uh, across the globe in that sense but if you look at you know, business sector by business sector I, I wouldn't say there is um, any one that stands out as either leading or lagging, to be to be perfectly honest, um, in, in terms of types of system, 
um, if you read a lot of the literature, um, it's often said that things like um, perhaps very safety critical systems, for example, that need that rigor of um, very tightly defined technical specifications and very tightly defined requirements to go with them might not be quite um, so suitable to um, agile architecture and agile delivery techniques. But I have to counter that by saying personally, I've, I've not had experience of, of that effect. But yeah, I know if you look in the literature, that is sometimes what is said. All right, thank you. Um, back to Archimate here um, and the exchange format. So it, uh, it's, a, it's a statement with a question at the end. So it turns out that the exchange format leaves some freedom and I've encountered differences, especially in terms of layout of diagrams. The model is okay, but for instance, different tools save different things. So if you share a model, it will look differently. Will there be an initiative to drive tool providers to make diagram layouts to be more exchangeable or make the exchange format more prescriptive here? Any thoughts on that for those in the Archimate forum? Yes, that, that, that's um, the, the thing is that uh, we start to see the benefit of the exchange file format by people uh, actually using it and uh, and exchanging models. So of course now that it is used by some uh, some people to for for several use cases, I've already seen people trying to uh, work collaboratively on uh, on the same model by using uh, several tools uh, from different tool vendors. So. Um, so we, we we are now facing so this kind of questions. Uh, uh, we had also some time ago people asking for uh, making ID persistent, and uh, so this basically uh, leads us to uh, uh, a kind of balance that we have to find between uh, having a format which is um, uh, very very precise, uh, but that no tool supports, or having a format which is maybe in some cases a bit loose, but which is supported. I guess that the, we are at the beginning of this story, even if the format exists uh, or has existed for the past uh, three or four years now. Uh, and we have to improve it, and, uh, and that's an ongoing process. Uh, for example, we, st we are still not able to, uh, to exchange uh, uh, stereotypes or customization of, uh, of concepts, and that's something that uh, should be really needed in the future because people will more and more use Archimate for some specific, uh, uh, in some specific context in which they will use customization. I, I have lots of, um, uh, I know lots of people are using it this way. So we have to improve it and, uh, and we need feedback and we, we need people using it um, more and more. Right, okay. Um, sp specific comment on this one, follow-up question there. Uh, those involved for both Biz Design and Archie are represented on the panel. Will they work on this? Put you guys on the spot. As, as you can imagine, for a software vendor, uh, there are many, many requirements coming from many, many directions. So yeah. the only thing I can say is that you're, if, if you're a customer of Biz Design uh, and you're, you have an interest specifically in the exchange format, make sure that we know about that because right. you know, prioritization is always difficult there's always more work to be done than that we have resources so it's it's like that um, and we have invested quite a lot in the past yeah um, and that's also something that we think about yeah we, we put in a lot of effort how much can we keep up doing doing that understood understood yeah this, I, I would this, just this add thing. a few things Steve sorry yeah go ahead thank you. Yeah, I would just say in the actual when we developed the format, you know, as as Mark said, that we we did bring as many of the tool suppliers together as we as we could, and obviously if there are others out there who want to to join in the interoperability testing, you know, we we welcome them. You know, we try and round robin the the models through the various tools as best we can, and um, so that's what we'd say is don't you know come and come and come in and join us. You know, yeah. we've got a. We've got a Git, you know, we've got an area on the GitLab project for for the Exchange file format. More than welcome to have other tool suppliers come in and uh, you know, basically exchange the models. We can get them looked at, and we find out quite a few things. You know, as we did that, you know, such as how you scale the model, you know, your various coordinate points and so on. Mm -hmm. We, yeah, you know, 
it's really through use and of course there's a lot of uses we see of the models that we hadn't even imagined which is the actual success you know it's been picked up and used actually outside tools for all sorts of things so yeah it's very yeah. successful i remember when we uh, set off back in 2012 thinking we, we people told us we couldn't do it <laughs> <laughs> chris did you want to chris ford did you want to add something or yeah, I just the you know the it's maybe just my reading of the comment, but I I want to make sure that people who are listening understand that you know it's not folks like me and Sonia turning around to representatives of various commercial products or open source products uh, dictating what components of the standards folks will work on. There has to be a common perceived value across the membership in order to work and prioritize a topic. This goes back to Mark's comment that for commercial organizations like BizDesign, there's a lot of, you know, there are a lot of pressures for folks volunteering their time like JB, there are a lot of pressures. It's where the business value converges inside the open group for members, that that's where they tend to spend their time. I, I'm not uh, dismissing the question. I'm just trying to give a little bit of insight about how work gets prioritized by the membership about what to deliver into the standard. It's both a combination of the external communications that we get through these user groups and the uh, priorities that the uh, members of the open group see about where updating the standards will add business value. Right, yeah, and I, and I uh, yeah, as you're, you're absolutely right about the, uh, the different priorities and I, I don't know. I don't know who actually wrote the words, but in the guide that Mark was talking about um, earlier in his session, um, I, I noted down something that I loved, which was that that models can help you uh, have a better way of prioritizing than decibel-driven prioritization. I loved decibel-driven oh, prioritization. <laughs> Well, I loved yeah. it, Mark. It was, uh, yes. We, yeah, the loudest that, voice shouldn't, shouldn't always win. Um, no, that's right. The that's loudest voice shouldn't win. And, and the squeaky squeaky wheel shouldn't always get the oil. I, I love the term. So, um, <laughs> good one. And it shows I've read the guide as well, Mark. So, it's, uh, that's good. Excellent. Um, so, <laughs> we, we are out of time. Um, but I do want to go to this one last question because um, I, think, I, I think it's interesting. Um, anyone feel free to... Uh, to chime in, but uh, the question is, for data architecture modeling, we can use semantic ontologies. Is it possible to envisage having an ontologies of Archimate models, i.e. integration of EA, Archimate, and semantic technologies? Yes, it's a head scratcher. Yeah. No, that, that's really interesting because we, um, I remember we had a presentation, it was something like maybe three years ago at, uh, yeah. at Amsterdam when, where we, um, we discussed the use of uh, ontologies and, uh, and knowledge uh, covered by Archimedes model, that was uh, the topic. And uh, we were, at that time, we, we imagined that uh, maybe in the future we could have some kind of a, a chatbot uh, which could answer questions for architects uh, using uh, uh, models. Um, so, so I, I guess that it's not very difficult to co to convert an Archimedes model and or any model to some kind of ontology. Uh, the question is more about how to make it stand out. There, there are already on the um, on internet some ontology for Archimedes. Uh, so the question is, does it does this make sense for the open group to uh, and the Archimedes forum to to create such kind of uh, uh, I would say default ontology for Archimedes and. Uh, and uh, as Chris said, uh, that's an interesting question, but uh, we we have to prioritize things, and uh, and for yeah. the moment, that's not on uh, on on the top list. But that's an interesting question. But people can uh, can already try to uh, to do something about on their own. Uh, they, are, they can look uh, on internet. There are things about it. So so if someone comes with some interesting uh, use cases and uh, and does something for sure we'll uh, look at it and uh, and see how we we can standardize it thank you okay um i'm going to be respectful of people's time there are some people for uh, who are uh, for whom it's very late um attending this right now so we are we are 5 minutes over so i'm going to draw the uh, the panel to a to a close but thank uh, each and every one of our panelists um Michelle, Sonia, Chris Frost, Jean-Baptiste Seredi, Mark Langhorst, Chris Ford, and Andrew Josie. Thank you all for your insights and for answering questions. 
Um, and uh, thank you all to, uh, to everyone who submitted a question and to everyone who's attended today. Um, that will bring us to the end of this session. I hope you found it uh, useful. Please do go to the uh, ratings um, channel on the, on the left-hand side of your screen. We'd love to see uh, what you think of, the, of this and, and other um, sessions that you've attended. And uh, uh, thank you all. That's it. That's it for today. Thank you all for joining and uh, uh, keep well and, uh, and be safe wherever you are.